how we make and store an entire year's worth of sauerkraut. I have a full circle moment to share with you. This is a jar of kraut from last year's garden. In fact, it's the last jar. We're just finishing it up right at the same time that we're making this year's sauerkraut. And I just think that's so neat. It's incredibly rewarding to be able to grow or produce a year's worth of anything, but especially sauerkraut, because we do rely on it as one of our most important preserves. We put up about five gallons of kraut every year. What sauerkraut is, if you're not familiar, is simply fermented cabbage. And it's actually pretty easy to make if you follow a few simple guidelines. People have been fermenting food since probably the beginning of time because it's a fantastic way to preserve them, to take what's in abundance now and preserve it for a time when that thing is not in abundance. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take the dozens of cabbages that we grew in our garden this year and turn them into something that lasts a really long time throughout the winter and through next spring until we have fresh cabbages again next summer. So of course, you'll need cabbage to make sauerkraut. You, you only need cabbage and salt. That's all you need to make sauerkraut. And you can make as much or as little as you want. You can make a smaller batch. You definitely don't have to make a ton of it like I'm going to make. One secret to a great sauerkraut is to slice the cabbage as thinly as possible. I like to start by cutting the head in half through the core so that it stays intact. And then I put the flat side down on the cutting board and start cutting it into thin shreds. If we're going through a lot of cabbages, I will use a kraut cutter. I'll show you that in a second. But if I'm just doing one or two heads, a smaller batch, I will cut it by hand. If you want to get thin shreds, you will need to have a pretty sharp knife. If we're having a big kraut making day, which we are today because we had all these cabbages growing and then it rained a lot and they started to split so they needed to be picked and used, which is usually what causes us to have a kraut making day, we get out the kraut cutter. This is just a big stainless steel box with some blades that you slide the cabbage over and this plastic white box helps you to hold on to it without risking cutting your fingers off. It works really slick and it makes the most beautiful shreds. Once the cabbage is shredded, I weigh it out. I know there's a lot of old fashioned techniques where you just layer cabbage in a crock or in a jar with salt. And I don't like that method. I think there's way too much room for error there. I prefer to weigh out the cabbage so I know exactly how much salt to use. And that means it's not too salty and it is salty enough that it prevents bad bacteria from growing. And I like to make my kraut in half gallon jars. And I have found that four pounds of shredded cabbage is the perfect amount to fit in one of those jars. The next step is to salt it. I like to use a bigger bowl for this because I need a little bit more room to work. So I start by putting a layer of cabbage on the bottom of my big bowl. And now I'm going to use two tablespoons of salt for my four pounds of cabbage. And the type of salt that you use does matter. I like a good quality white or gray sea salt. Do not use iodized salt or any other salt that has additives in it. And then I just layer it in. I put about a quarter of the cabbage, a quarter of the salt, a quarter of the cabbage, a quarter of the salt until I've used it all. Doing it in this layered way is really helpful to make sure that the salt gets as evenly distributed throughout the cabbage as possible so it can start drawing out all the moisture. After the salt and cabbage have been layered in, I let it sit for about 10 minutes and then come back and look at what it looks like. All of the water is starting to be released and now I start to massage it and knead it, almost like I'm kneading bread dough. You don't wanna be gentle here, really squeeze it and press in it. That's gonna help release even more moisture. Then I let it sit for another 10 minutes and come back and it's even wiltier. Look at how much moisture has been released and is at the bottom of the bowl. I'll knead it again and mix it all around and then let it sit for another 10 minutes before I start to jar it up. It probably goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. You should definitely have very clean washed hands for all of this. For putting the kraut into the jar, a jar funnel isn't totally necessary, but it does help to keep things neat and tidier. I like to fill the jar about a quarter to a third full, and then I stop to pack it down and to pound it a little bit more. I have this handy dandy kraut pounder. You don't have to have that. Before I had this, I just used my fist, if you can fit your hand in a, in a wide mouth jar. But you do have to stop and pack it down or you won't be able to fit quite as much as you need to into the jar. This is another place where you don't need to and you don't want to be gentle. Really pack it in there and pound it. The more you pound the kraut, the more water it will release and the more brine you'll have to work with, which is a good thing, especially for storing kraut long term. As I'm filling the rest of the jar, I stop every quarter or every third of the way up the jar 
to use the kraut pounder to pack it in before filling it the rest of the way. You might be wondering why, if you're making gallons and gallons of sauerkraut, why do you do it in jars and why not in one of those big stoneware crocks? And there's a couple reasons. I think doing it in a jar is a lot easier to control the quality and I have a lot better success rate this way. I also don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. If something were to go wrong in the batch made in a big crock, I would lose the whole thing. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but as you're prepping your cabbage and cutting it, save one of the nicer outer leaves to use as a cap. For fermenting cabbage, you will need a weight of some sort and a lid with an airlock. I really like this set from Ball that comes together. The spring holds down the cabbage and the cap has this little valve in it to let the gases out. Take your cabbage cap and place it on top of the shredded cabbage and gently push it down. This is just going to help to prevent little pieces from floating to the top because if they float to the top, they might mold. Next, I'll put on the weight and the cover. You'll notice that my jar is full and this is important. You want to use the smallest jar you can to fit what you're fermenting so that you don't have a lot of extra air space at the top. Always set your jar or jars on a plate or pan to catch the liquid. In my experience, around day two or three, this will really start to get fermenting and it will expand inside and it will leak kraut juice all over. And not only do we not want that leaking all over the kitchen counter and the floor, but we actually want to keep and save that juice. And here we are. This is about 48 hours after we packed the cabbage into these jars and you can see all of the liquid that's coming out that little vent hole and pooling on the top of the lids and then also streaming down the jar and collecting on the pan below. And I'm gonna collect this by moving these jars off the pan for just a second and then pouring the juice into a cup. I'm gonna keep this stashed in the fridge with the lid on and then every single day that these are still producing liquid and leaking, I'm gonna collect it. After the cabbage has settled down a bit, meaning it's not kind of bubbling up and spilling over the edges anymore, I like to come through and clean things up a little bit. You can see this one has some foamy residue from where it bubbled out of the valve. And I'm just going to rinse the cover off and rinse the spring and clean up the jar a little bit. And I don't wash this in soapy water or anything. I find that just running it under some cool water and giving it a little bit of a rub is good enough to get most of the gunk off. I'm also going to wipe the jar top a little bit. This one <laughs> fermented a little bit violently, I think, and really kind of bubbled over and caused a lot of residue around the jar, which is fine. I'm just going to get rid of it, though. This one also had a lot of floaters. Sometimes you just get a batch that has a lot of floating pieces of cabbage, and there's not too much you can do about it. So I'm not going to worry about these, but I am just going to keep an eye on this jar over time. And that's it. I rinsed off the spring, replaced it, and now I'm setting it back up, and this will keep fermenting. So how do you know when your kraut is done and how long does it take? Well, that's going to be different for everybody and it depends on a couple factors. The two main ones are how warm is your kitchen and how done or how fermented do you like it? We like our sauerkraut pretty well fermented and our house is a little bit on the cooler side. So we typically let this go for about two weeks, uh, at least two weeks, more like three sometimes depending. But I know that there are people who only ferment it one week and some people who ferment it for a couple months. So it's really quite varied. I think the best thing you can do is taste test it. Open it up and have a bite every now and then. Keep trying it, see how it changes over time and learn what you like. One way that you can tell your kraut is done or getting close to done is by the color. Of course, when you first shred it, it's more vibrant green and white. And as it ferments, it turns kind of drab and kind of yellow. Once the sauerkraut is done and we think it tastes delicious, I prepare it for long-term storage. And the first thing I do is top off the liquid level if it needs it, which it usually does after fermenting on the counter for a few weeks. And for this, I'm using that extra brine that I saved that was kind of spilling out of the jars and collecting on that pan in the beginning of fermentation. If you don't have any brine, you can use a mixture of half bottled lemon juice and half water to top off your jars. Don't use salt water. It'll cause your kraut to turn brown. And then the last thing I do before I stash these in the fridge is I use a little soup spoon to help remove any cabbage floaters that I can. You don't have to be perfect, but I do like to try to get as many as possible. The really important thing is that you don't have any stuck to the sides that are totally dry and not in any brine at all. And to make extra sure of that, I use a clean paper towel to wipe the top lip of the jar and the inside of the jar down to the brine level. For long-term storage, I really like these plastic lids from Ball. You can use metal ones too, and I have, but you just have to be careful that they don't get too much 
kraut juice on them or otherwise they can rust and then i'm going to stash this in the fridge it needs to be kept cold either in the refrigerator or in a cold root cellar once the kraut is done and you move it to the fridge to stop or almost stop fermentation something that happens and i think it might have to do with the temperature change from going to room temperature to cold is that the liquid level will decrease in your jars almost immediately within the first couple days of putting it in the fridge so i always check on them right away and am prepared to top them off with more liquid if they need it and this is again where you could use any kraut juice that you saved and you should absolutely save any kraut juice that you can or a mixture of half bottled lemon juice and half water which is what i'm using here on this dill pickle kraut that i have that needed a little bit more liquid in it and there you go that is kraut making let me know if you have any questions and if you found this video helpful i would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted